Okay, uh, today is May the 23rd, 2017, and I have a little short testimony I'd like to do that uh, something I think that could help a lot of people in their praying and as far as getting results or not getting results. This is something that I've learned uh, by experience. And, uh, you know, the Bible talks about uh, being thankful, how important it is for us to be thankful. And, you know, God has done, he's already proved, there's nothing else he can do to prove how much he loves you and I, how much he's for us. And uh, how much more, there's nothing else he can do. He sent his only begotten son to this world as his offering for our sins, uh, his sacrifice, his gift to us was his son. And he went to the cross where he took our sins, our sicknesses, our diseases, our rebellion, and hung on the cross so that you and I could receive forgiveness and be reconciled to God. And... Uh, so how much more can God do? He's already done all he's going to do. Uh, what we have to do is get in agreement with what he's done for us and accept it and believe it. You know, to, to, give, to be saved, you have to believe. Well, it's extremely important that you and I are thankful. You know, we have been forgiven. If, if you're born again, he forgave us. That's how you got saved. We accept, we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, says we will be saved. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness, not because we earned it, but because of what Jesus did and the price he paid for us. And then with our mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So it's extremely important for us to get on board with how God sees things. He knows what he's done. He knew that he took our sins, sicknesses, diseases, all the bad stuff, and put it on Jesus on the cross where Jesus paid the price. We were uh, bought with a price, and what he did, and that was the way God chose to reconcile the human race back to himself. And we have to get on board with God and how he sees it. We don't have to ask God uh, for much because he knows what you need before you ask. What we should do is just thank him for it, for what he's already provided through that gospel that's why jesus was sent to open the door to all the promises you know all the promises of god are yes and amen that's what it tells us in second corinthians chapter uh, one all the promises are god we don't have to wonder about if it's god's will yeah it's god's will you know there was a leper that came up to jesus and said lord if you if you will you can make me clean jesus said well i will be thou clean you know any everybody that came to jesus got what they were after that they came in faith. And so we don't have to wonder if it's his God's will. Yeah, it's his will. That's why he said Jesus in the first place, that we might all be saved. So the, 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 what I'm after here today is that uh, I went through a period of time over the last several months where things were just not working the way I thought they should be. And I, there's a scripture in the Old Testament where it says that uh, let's plead together. Put God in remembrance. And he said, put me in remembrance. Let's plead together. So I was thought I was doing that, and really, I was complaining. I didn't know it, but I, I, I listened to what was coming out of my heart. You know, your whatever's in your heart will come out your mouth. And I was telling God and reminding him about some things that he wasn't doing. And I started hearing it, and I thought, you know what? This is not right. And so he brought me to repentance. He reminded me about some stuff, and this is where I'm at. You know, out in the wilderness, God had delivered Israel out of Egypt great signs and wonders they hadn't been out there long and they started complaining and murmuring and God got angry about it and he sent fiery serpents among them and those serpents started biting and they started biting them and they started dying and then they cried out they realized they had messed up and they cried out and asked Moses to intercede for them and he did and God told Moses all right tell you what you make a serpent and put it up on a pole and you tell the people that when they get bit to look at this serpent on the pole and quit looking down at those serpents. He said, if they'll do that, they'll live. If they don't, they'll die. So I remembered that. I started thinking about that. 
And then he also reminded me about the children of Israel, how uh, he brought them, he promised them, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a land, it's going to be milk and honey. So they came up to that land, and they sent spies into the land, and they sent 12 of them, and 10 of them came back with a bad report, saying, boy, this is just like God said, it's a land of milk and honey. But, you know, there's, there's giants in that land, and we're like grasshoppers in their sight. And there's only two of them that had a good report. That's Joshua and Caleb. And Caleb said, look, let's go up and possess it. We're well able to take that land by the spirit that's in us. And the, But the ten turned their fears and they're looking at the giants instead of looking at what God had promised them. They were doing the same thing as the ones out there in the fiery serpents. They started looking at the problems. And this is what I'd been doing, and I didn't really even realize it. And God had great mercy on me to show me what I was doing. You know, how we should, if if they would have said, you know what, these giants are nothing. We serve a big God, and what he has promised us, he is well able to bring it to pass. That's what God, uh, that's how Abraham stayed strong in faith. It tells you this in the book of uh, in Romans, God had promised Abraham a son. And they had to believe for a long time, but, but it says he was strong in faith. How? Giving glory to God, knowing that what God had promised, he was well able to perform. This is how we should look at it. You know, those giants are nothing in God's eyes. Even talking, Jesus even talked about speaking to the mountain. He said, talk to your mountain. So whatever your problems are, I don't care if they seem as big as a mountain, you speak to it. You say, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. Quit looking at your problems. Look at the solution. There's where your deal is. We serve a big God, and those giants are nothing but grasshoppers in his sight. That's where you need to look at. And you just start professing and confessing the, the, the same things as what God says. He says, you're healed, you're forgiven, I've made you rich, I have done all this stuff for you. He hadn't forgot. He's waiting for us to acknowledge it and get on board and believe it and hold on to it no matter what. No matter what the circumstances look like or how bad it seems like it gets. A lot of times it seems like it gets worse before it gets better. You hang on to it. And you keep believing it until you see it manifest. And look, get your eyes on Jesus. And that's really about all I have to say. And I'll see if I can. <laughs> this is a little difficult to do without getting your finger in the way to stop it. But till next time, God bless.